Holy Bible Readings to Request Divine Union, Part 24. This is what a person looks like when they have the Holy Spirit. This is what Moses looked like when he came down from Mount Sinai, and the people could not look at him. He was so bright. That's why he had to wear a, a covering over his head. This is what Adam and Eve looked like in the Garden of Eden, but lost that. And that's why they just stayed, knew that they were naked. As you can see, the other people around them, they don't have that, and we can see what they're wearing. This is what Christ wants to do with all of us. Fill us with his Holy Spirit. This is divine union, theosis. We continue with Leviticus. We're reading twice as fast, so we should be finished the Holy Bible in six months. Leviticus chapter 1. And we'll be reading parts of the New Testament as well. Burnt offerings. Now the Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from the tabernacle of testimony, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, If a man among you should offer gifts to the Lord from the cattle, the ox, or the sheep, you shall offer your gifts. If his gift should be a whole burnt offering from the oxen, he shall offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it at the door of the tabernacle of testimony as acceptable before the Lord. Then he shall put his hand on the head of the burnt offering, and it will be acceptable on his behalf to make anointment for him. He shall kill the young bull before the Lord, and the priests, Aaron's son, shall offer the blood and sprinkle the blood all around on the altar by the doors of the tabernacle of testimony. Then he shall skin the whole burnt offering and cut it into pieces. The sons of Aaron the priest shall put fire on the altar and lay the wood on the fire. Then the priests, Aaron's sons, shall lay the parts, the head, and the fat upon the wood and fire on the altar. That he shall wash its entrails and its legs with water. The priest shall then put all of it on the altar as a burnt offering. A sacrifice for sweet aroma to the Lord. If his gift to the Lord should be from the sheep, from the lambs, or the kids, as a whole burnt offering, he should offer a male without blemish and put his hand on his head. He shall kill it on the north side of the altar before the Lord, and the priest's Aaron's son shall sprinkle his blood all around the altar. Then they shall cut it into pieces with its head and its fat, and the priest shall lay them upon the wood and fire on the altar. But he shall wash the entrails and the legs with water. Then the priest shall offer all of it and put it on the altar as a burnt offering, a sacrifice for a sweet aroma to the Lord. But if she should offer a gift to the Lord from the birds for a burnt offering, he shall offer his gift from the turtle doves or young pigeons. The priest shall offer it on the altar, wring off its head and put it on the altar. Its blood shall be drained out at the base of the altar. Then he shall remove its crop with its feathers and cast it beside the altar on the east side into the place for ashes. Then he shall split, split it at its... Uh, Split it at its wings, but shall not divide it. And the priest shall put it upon the wood and the fire on the altar as a burnt offering, a sacrifice for a sweet aroma to the Lord. Grain Offerings, Chapter 2 Now if a soul should offer, offer a gift of a grain offering to the Lord, his gift shall be a fine flour, and he shall pour oil on it, and put frankincense on it. He shall bring it to Aaron's sons, the priest, one of whom shall take it from it, it his handful of the flour, fine flour and oil with all the frankincense. Then the priest shall put it on the altar as a memorable, a memorial, a sacrifice for a sweet aroma to the Lord. The rest of the grain offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is the most holy of the Lord's sacrifices. But if you should offer a gift as a grain offering, baked in an oven, a gift of fine flour to the Lord, it shall be unleavened cakes of fine flour mixed with oil, or unleavened, unleavened wafers anointed with oil. But if your gift should be a grain offering fried in a pan, it shall be a fine flour unleavened and mixed with oil. You shall bake it, break it in pieces and pour oil on it. It is a grain offering to the Lord. If your gift should be a grain offering from the great, it shall be made of fine flour with oil. You shall offer the grain offering made of these things to the Lord, and when it is presented to the priest, he shall bring it to the altar. Then the priest shall take from the grain, offering its memorial portion, and put it on the altar as a burnt offering for a sweet aroma to the Lord. But what is left of the grain offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. 
It is the most holy of the Lord's burnt offerings. No grain offering you offer to the Lord shall be made with leaven, for you shall burn no leaven or honey in any part offering to the Lord. As for a gift of first fruits, you shall offer them to the Lord, but they shall not be offered on the altar for a sweet aroma. Now every gift of your grain offering you shall season with salt. You shall not allow the salt of the Lord's covenant to be lacking from your grain offerings. With every grain offering you shall salt, offer salt to the Lord your God. If you should offer a grain offering of your first fruits to the Lord, you shall offer for the grain offering of your first fruits green heads of grain roasted on fire, green uh, grain beaten from full heads of the Lord for the Lord. Thus you shall offer your grain offering of first fruits. Then you shall put oil on it and put frankincense on it. It is a grain offering. The priest shall then offer its memorial portion, its beaten grain and oil with all the frankincense. It is a burnt offering to the Lord. Chapter 3. Peace Offerings Now if his gift for the Lord should be a peace offering, and if he should offer it from the oxen, whether male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before the Lord. Then he shall put his hands on the head of this gift and kill it at the doors of the tabernacle of testimony, and Aaron's sons, the priest, shall sprinkle the blood all around the altar of the whole burnt offering. He shall then offer from the peace offering a burnt offering to the Lord, and he shall remove its fat and cover that cover its entrails, all the fat of the entra- on the entrails, the two kidneys and the fat on them by the flanks, and the fatty lobe attached to the liver above the kidneys. And Aaron's sons, the priest, shall offer these upon the wood of fi- and fire on the altar of whole burnt offerings, as a burnt offering for a sweet aroma to the Lord. Now, if his peace offering should be a gift from the sheep, whether male or female, he shall offer it without blemish. If he should offer a lamb as his gift, he shall then offer it without blemish. Then he shall put his hands on the head of his gift and kill it before the doors of the tabernacle of testimony. And Aaron's son, the priest, shall sprinkle his blood all around on the altar. He shall then offer from the peace offering a burnt offering to God, and he shall remove its fat, the whole fat tail close to the backbone, the fat that covers the entrails and all the fat on the entrails, the two kidneys and the fat on them by the flanks, and the fatty lobe attached to the liver before the, above the kidneys. And the priest shall offer these on the altar as a burnt offering for a sweet aroma to the Lord. Now, if his gift should be from the goats, he shall offer it before the Lord. He shall put his hands on his, its head and kill it before the Lord at the doors of the tabernacle of testimony. And Aaron's sons, the priest, shall sprinkle his blood all around on the altar. Then he shall offer his burnt offerings to the Lord, and he shall remove its fat that covers the entrails, all the fat on the entrails, the two kidneys, and the fat on them by the flanks, and the fatty lobe attached to the liver above the kidneys. And the, pre- the priest shall offer on the altar as a burnt offering for a sweet aroma to the Lord. All the fat is the Lord's. It shall be a, plen- a perpetual ordinance throughout your generations, In all your dwellings you shall eat neither fat nor blood. Sin Offerings Chapter 4 Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, If a soul should sin involuntarily before the Lord against any of the Lord's ordinances, which ought not to be done, and does anything against them, even if he should be the anointed priest, and should sin to the detriment of the people, he shall offer to the Lord for his sin, he committed a young bull without blemish, from the oxen as a sin offering. He shall offer the young bull at the door of the tabernacle of testimony before the Lord, put his hand on the young bull's head, and kill the young bull before the Lord. Then the anointed and consecrated priests shall take some of the young bull's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of testimony. The priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle some of the blood seven times before the Lord in front of the tail of the veil of the holy place. Then the priest shall put some of some of the blood of the young bull on the horns of the altar of the incense compound before the Lord in the tabernacle of testimony, and he shall pour the remaining blood of the young bull at the base of the altar of whole burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of testimony. He shall take from it all the fat of the young bull as a sin offering, the fat that covers the entrails, and all the fat on the entrails, the two kidneys and the fat on them by the flanks, and the fatty lobe attached to the liver above the kidneys he shall remove, as it was taken from the young bull of the sacrifice of the peace offering, and the priest shall burn them on the altar of burnt offering. 
that the young bull's hide and all its flesh, with its head, ha head and legs, its entrails and excrement, the whole young bull he shall carry outside the camp to a clean place, where the ashes are poured out, and burn it on wood with fire, where the ashes are poured out, it shall be burned. Now if a whole congregation of Israel acts involuntarily in ignorance, and it is hidden from the eyes of the assembly, and they did something against any of the Lord's commandments which should not be done, and committed sin, when the sin they committed becomes known, then the assembly shall offer a young bull for the sin, and offer it before the doors of the tabernacle of testimony. Then the elders of the congregation shall put their hands on the head of the young bull before the Lord. The young bull shall then be killed before the Lord. The anointed priest shall bring some of the young bull blood to the tab tab uh, tabernacle of testimony. Then the priest shall dip his finger in the blood of the young bull and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord in front of the veil of the holy place. The priest shall put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of the incense compound which is before the Lord in the tabernacle of testimony, and he shall pour the remaining blood at the base of the altar of burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of testimony. He shall take all the fat from it and offer it on the altar. Then he shall do with the young bull as he did with the young bull of the sin offering. Thus he shall do with it. So the priest shall make atonement for them, and their sin shall be remitted them, and they shall carry the young bull outside the camp and burn it as they burned the fat, the first young bull, it is a sin offering for the assembly. Now if a ruler should sin and do something against any of the commandments of the Lord God, which should not be done, and commit sins involuntarily, and the sin he committed comes to his knowledge, he shall offer as a gift a kid of the goats, a male without blemish. He shall put his hand on the head of the kid and kill it in the place where they kill the whole burnt offering before the Lord. It is a sin offering. The priest shall then take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of whole burnt offering and pour its remaining blood at the base of the altar of the whole burnt offering. Then he shall offer all its fat to the altar, like the fat of the sacrifice of peace offering. So the priest shall make atonement for him concerning his sins, and it shall be remitted him. If any soul of the people of the land should sin involuntarily by doing something against any of the Lord's commandment, which ought not to be done, and commit sin, and the sin he committed comes to his knowledge. Then he shall bring a kid of, of, of the goats, a female without blemish, for the sin he committed. He shall put his hand on the head of the sin offering, and kill the kid and the sin offering, at the place of the whole burnt offering. Then the priest shall take some of the blood with his finger, put it on the horns of the altar of whole burnt offering, and pour all its remaining blood at the base of the altar. He shall remove all its fat, as fat is removed from the sacrifice of the peace offering, and the priest shall offer it on the altar for a sweet aroma to the Lord, so the priest shall make atonement for him, and it shall be remitted him. For he should bring as his, as his gift a sheep for a sin offering, he shall offer a female without blemish. Then he shall put his hand on the head of the sin offering and kill it as a sin offering at the place where they kill the whole burnt offering. The priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering, with his finger, put it on the horns of the altar of whole burnt offering, and pour all its remaining blood at the base of the altar. He shall remove all its fat, as the fat of the sheep is removed from the sacrifice of the peace offering. Then the priest shall put it on the altar for a whole burnt offering to the Lord, so the priest shall make atonement for his sins he committed, and it shall be remitted him. And now we continue with New Testament, and we start with um, Luke the Gospel of Luke. The first was Matthew and Mark. Now we go to Luke. Luke chapter 1. We know Luke was Greek. He was from Thebes. I've been to his tomb. Um, and he was a doctor. And he was also one of the two men that was walking to the road on the road to Emus after Christ's crucifixion and resurrection. It was Luke, and we'll see it here in this Gospel, and Cleopas. So they were both walking and wondering what were all these things that happened in Jerusalem with Christ's crucifixion and resurrection and the empty tomb. And that's when Christ appeared to them in the form of another man. They didn't recognize him until he broke bread and then disappeared in front of their eyes. Okay, so Luke was a doctor and he was the Apostle Paul's, St. Paul's doctor. So Luke, of course, had met Jesus. He was one of his disciples before Luke met uh, St. Paul the Apostle. 
So he was an educated man. He was a doctor. Um, and he was a Greek. A Greek. Uh, he, was, he was from Greece. You know, Greece was full of uh, Hebrews, of course. We know that um, the Greeks, the Spartans were Hebrews. There were Hebrews all over Greece. Synagogues all over Greece. From the north to the south. From the east to the west. Now, uh, chapter 1. Inasmuch as many prefaces, inasmuch as many have taken in hand to set the order and in order the narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us, just as those who from the beginning are or eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write to you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. So, um, eyewitnesses of Christ, Luke wrote his gospel to Theophilus, a prominent Gentile who had received Christian instruction. St. Ambrose notes that Theophilus can simply mean the, the lover of God, and therefore he writes, if you love God, it, it was written to you. So it, it pertains to all of us as well. Um, that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. John's birth announced to Zacharias, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was the, of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. But they had no children, because Elizabeth, Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving, As priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. And your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord, God, Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and this and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready the people prepared for the lord and zacharias said to the angel how shall i know this for i am an old man and my wife is well advanced in years and the angel answered and said to him i am gabriel who stands in the presence of god and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings but behold you will be mute and not be able to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. And the people waited for Zacharias, and marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned to them and remained speechless. So it was as soon as the days of his service were completed that he departed to his own house. Now after those days his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she hid herself five months, saying, Thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among people. Christ's birth announced to Mary. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And when he saw, she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and he shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? 
knowing means uh, having had uh, uh, bodily uh, contact with him. How can this be? The note says, does not indicate a lack of faith, as Zachariah question did. Rather, it is merely inquiring into the manner in which something so extraordinary would happen. Going on with the text. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who is called barren, for with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel, the angel departed from her. Elizabeth praised Mary, the mother of God. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to, the city, to a city of Judea and entered the house of Zacharias the greet, and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of things which were told her from the Lord. Mary exalts the Lord, the Magnificat. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the ima imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. He, and, and as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her house. John born and named. Now Elizabeth's full time came for her to be delivered, and she brought forth a son. When her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great, mercy, shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. So it was on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him by the name of his father Zacharias. His mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. But they said to her, There is no one among your relatives who is called by this name. So they made signs to his father, what would, what he would, would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, saying, His name is John. So they all marveled immediately. His mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, praising God. Then fear came on all who dwelt around them. And all these sayings were discussed throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all those who heard them kept them in their hearts, saying, What kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Zechariah's song, the Benedictus. Now his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform a mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. A new child will be called the prophet of the highest, for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, with which a uh, day spring from on high has visited us to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. John's growth. So the child grew and became strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his manifestation to Israel. Chapter 2. Christ born in the city of David. 
And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing, governing Syria, so all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was, out, he was of the house of the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. The Witness of the Shepherds Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was with the angels, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the sheep, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them according to this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were, behold, which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. The naming of Jesus. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Jesus dedicated in the temple. Now when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were completed, that's 40 days after his birth, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it's written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Simeon's song, the Nunc Dimittis. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. The Lord's Christ. So he came to the Spirit, he came by the Spirit to the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring re revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rise of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Anna's Prophecy Now there was one, Anna, a prophetess, a daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, she was of great age and had lived with a, with a husband seven years from her virginity, and this woman was a widow of about 84 years, who did not depart from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Jesus' Childhood in Nazareth So when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew up and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Jesus in his father's house. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. 
When they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now so it was that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them with questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Jesus' growth. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. And we'll continue with chapter 3 of Luke tomorrow. Thank you for your support. God bless you and mark you as his. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.